Hello everyone, I hope all of you are having a great time. My name is Anjit Rudeja. I am working as Technical Architect SD4 at Adobe and here I present all the solutions to weekly contest 293. In this video, I'll be talking about count integers in intervals. The rest three are already solved. The link is in the description below. So do check them out. Here in this question, we need to implement the count interval class that supports three methods. The first one is a constructor of the class. The next one is the add method that adds an interval within the range of left up till right. And the third one is a count, which returns the number of integers that are present in at least one interval. So these are the three methods that we need to support. Here they are provided us with an example. I'll be walking you through this example as well as the algorithm to go about it. Why the presentation? So let's quickly hop on to it. Lead code 2276, count integers in intervals. It's a hard level question on lead code and I don't feel the same. After going through the solution, you will be on the same page. I promise this, that the solution that I am proposing is the simplest, cleanest and easiest way to solve this question. And I bet you will be unable to understand it fully. So do watch it till the very last. Also, in case if you have any doubt understanding this question in general or anything you want to ask from me, please feel free to drop a message on the Telegram group or the Discord server of Coding Decoded. Both the links are stated in the description too. Do check them out. Now let's get back to business and see the code live in action. How are we going to solve this up? So let's take the same example that was specified in the question. I have added a new entry in the last so that you get a better understanding of the algorithm. Uh, the data structure that I'm going to use for solving this up is tree maps and uh, tree maps is similar to maps. It just maintains a sorted order on the basis of keys that are getting dumped onto that map. So read about tree maps, they are ultra important for building the understanding. And uh, let's start the iteration. The first element that we see happens to be two comma three. So uh, the tree map is right now empty. So what we should do, we should go ahead and add this entry into our tree map. So tree map gets two comma three added onto it. Along with this, we'll also update the count variable. So by default count was zero. Now what we will be doing since we are adding a new interval, we'll be updating the count variable too. How to calculate the actual count? It's really simple. Uh, go to that interval, look out for the right index, look out for the left index. So the range would be given by right minus left plus one. So what would come out in this case, three minus two plus one that gives you two. Therefore the count will get updated to two. Pretty simple, straightforward, no rocket science so far. We have yeah, just used a simple formula, right minus left plus one to update the count. Now let's proceed ahead. The next element that we see is seven comma 10. And in this case, what we are gonna look out for, we look out for the right value that is getting inserted into the tree map. And since this right value is 10, we will look out for the immediate lower entry then 10 that exists in the stream map. So what is that entry? That entry happens to be two comma three. So let's pull this out from the tree map. Let's an analyze this entry. So we have two comma three, which is immediately lower than 10. So what we are going to do, we will compare three with seven. And as you can see, three happens to be lower than seven. There is no overlap as a result of which 7 comma 10 will be inserted into our tree map. Now tree map has two entries, 3 comma, uh, 2 comma 3 and 7 comma 10. And along with this, we will be updating the count value as well. So let's calculate the count corresponding to uh, 7 comma 10 using the same formula, right minus left plus one. So 10 minus seven plus one gives you four. So let's go ahead and uh, update the count to uh, two plus four, which is six. So six gets updated. So far, our tree map has two intervals. The first one is two comma three and the second one is seven comma 10. And right now we haven't seen any overlapping interval so far. Now let's get to the interesting case. The next case is five comma eight. So what we are going to do, we'll analyze the right value. The right value is eight. We'll look out for the immediately lower entry in the tree map less than eight. So what is that entry? That entry happens to be seven comma 10. So let's analyze seven comma 10. And uh, what we are going to do, we will check the rightmost value in this entry. 
So what is the rightmost value in this entry? Here it is 10 and we will compare it with the left entry which is getting inserted into our tree map. So what is the left entry that is getting inserted into our tree map? 5 is getting inserted. As you can see 10 happens to be greater in value than 5 as a result of which it's an overlapping case. Therefore we have to do some extra manipulation. What is that something extra? Let's have a look at it. Let me just write 5 comma 8 here and we know that uh, these two intervals are going to get merged. Therefore what I'm going to do I'll simply delete this entry from my tree map. So let's delete this up. Uh, the count would be reduced by how much amount? Again let's use the same formula 10 minus 7 plus 1. 10 minus 7 is 3, 3 plus 1 is 4. So count get reduced by 4 it gets updated to 2. Along with this we have to merge these intervals up. How do we perform the merging part? So let's pull out the left left values from here and let's analyze the minimum one out of these two. What is the minimum one out of these two? The minimum one is 5. We are basically merging these intervals up and along with this we'll also update the rightmost interval. So uh, let's analyze 8 and 10 which one is the maximum one out there. The maximum one out there is 10. So we have merged these intervals and this is the resultant interval that we get. So what we are going to do, we will simply insert this interval back into the tree map. So this gets deleted and this gets inserted 5 comma 10. Along with this, we should be updating the count to and let's use the same formula right minus left plus 1. So 10 minus 5 gives you 5, 5 plus 1 is 6. So count gets updated by 6 units. Uh, 2 plus 6 is 8 so this gets updated to 6 so far so good and let's look at the last part as well where I am adding 4 comma 9 into the uh, count interval class and let me just change the color of pen for better understanding so let's redo the same thing I'll exactly follow the same steps we need to first of all identify whether it's an overlapping case or not once we are done then the rest of the steps are really simple so let me just draw a line here and let's see what interval are we gonna add. We have 4 comma 9. So let's analyze the right part of it. So what entry does exist in my tree map which is lower than 9. There is only one such entry which is 5 comma 10. So 5 comma 10 is lower than 9. Immediately lower than 9. And what we are gonna do, we will analyze this up. So we will compare 10 with 4. As you can see. 10 happens to be greater in value than 4 as a result of which it's an overlapping case. We have identified it's a it's an overlapping case. So what we are going to do, we'll exactly follow the same steps as we just did. We'll be deleting 5 comma 10 from our tree map. So this is gone and we'll be reducing the count uh, using uh, this interval. So count gets reduced back to 2 and then we will perform the merging operation. So we will choose the minimum of these two, 4 comma 5. Let's, let me just write min here. And out of 4 comma 5, which one is the lower one? 4 is the lower one. Out of these two, which one is the maximum one? 10 is the maximum one. So the new interval that gets generated is 4 comma 10. Let's calculate the count corresponding to this. The count would be equal to right minus left plus 1. 10 minus 4 is 6. 6 plus 1 is 7. So this corresponds to 7 as a result of which we will have to update the count by 7 units. So 2 plus 7 gives you 9. The answer becomes 9 which is in sync with our expectation. So this is what we are going to do whenever we see a new interval coming up and let's quickly walk through the coding section. I will exactly follow the same steps as I have just talked here. I have created a tree map. I have created a count variable. In the constructor I initialize the tree map to new tree map count to 0 and moving ahead uh, count helper method is really straightforward. Uh, we are simply returning the count. The actual algorithm lies in writing the add method appropriately. So what I have done here, I have created two variables left and right. So let's call it L and R which will actually tell us what insertions are going to be made in the tree map and it will be also responsible for updating the count. So uh, let's forget this algo for some time and let's carefully look at the line 31 and 32. Here you can see a new insertion is being made for the range left and right and the count is also getting updated using the same formula that I talked about in the presentation. So far so good. 
now let's uh, look at this while loop which is actually responsible for checking whether it's an overlapping condition or not while this condition is met uh, which is the overlapping condition so what i'm going to do here i'll extract the smaller left entry i'll extract the smaller right entry so i've identified that particular interval uh, which gives me the smaller left and the smaller right with respect to the right value that is getting inserted into my tree map so remember look at look at the statement very carefully tree map dot floor key and the right value is getting passed not the left one and using this uh, left value we are generating the corresponding right value for that interval so what what i'm doing here i'm reducing the count using the same formula i'm removing it from the tree map i'm merging these intervals up so left gets updated to math dot min left comma smaller left minimum of these two and right gets updated to math dot max right comma smaller of right and once i have updated l and r values i uh, pu push them back into the tree map once i'm out of this loop and update the count appropriately so the crux lies in writing the overlapping condition appropriately which is this one so with this let's wrap up today's session i hope you enjoyed it if you did please don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel thanks for viewing it have a great day ahead and stay tuned for more updates from coding decoded i'll see you tomorrow with another fresh question but till then goodbye